Welcome everyone to Zoom into Books this beautiful Sunday afternoon. We have expert fly fisherman Rick Robinson and Wade DeHate with us today. They have a new book out. The title is A Fish Ate My Homework. So Rick, take it away. Tell us about yourself and about this fantastic book. Thank you very much, Kathy. Uh, I'm here with my co-author, Wade DeHate. Now, a lot of people who have gone into Zoom into books before have gone in to, to take a look at some of the uh, novels that I've written or some of the political thrillers that I've written. This is really kind of something new for me, uh, is to be able to write about what I do in my spare time, in my fun time. Uh, and so it's been kind of a, an interesting experience for us. Uh, as I said, it, it, the 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 book came about, Wade. It, you know, as we were we were out on the we were out on the river yeah. repeatedly one day, and my publisher kept wanting to get a hold of me, uh, and she couldn't get a hold of me. And I finally came in, and she said, "Why is it every time I call you, you're fishing? Gone fishing? Gone fishing? We had been we had <laughs> and we had been out." And Kathy said, "You're fishing so much. I've always wanted to have a book." that kind of focused in on fly fishing, especially for the areas that uh, that we cover. And I said, well, gosh, Kathy, I'm not that good at that. I really need kind of a technical writer to do that. And Wade was up in the front of the boat and kind of looked back and waved at me. And that's his background. Yes. Yeah, he could do that. So we, uh, we ended up starting putting together this whole idea for uh, a book that it, that really doesn't go as much into the whole idea of being yeah not not all the deep technicality for very advanced folks to help folks get started you know and not get frustrated yeah wait uh, I mean your background I, uh, you know it's funny when when we did this when this all came about I had never really thought about it mm -hmm. is that how much you actually had written throughout your career as you were a fire chief uh system fire chief in Hillsborough County Florida yeah Rick calls me chief you know you know hey chief what is this and you know, that's where he gets that from I spent 31 years with fire rescue down in the Tampa Bay area and from the fishing standpoint you know Rick and I have fished a bunch you know spin fishing and all in the Cumberland River is behind us here and we're we're very used to doing that but one time on the boat you know Rick mentioned to me you know my publisher uh, was looking maybe to do a fly fishing book and I said well we can we can trade in these spinning rods and, and start fly fishing and walk through it so a lot of this is kind of driven by you know Rick getting into fly fishing I've been doing it since back in the 80s uh, you know with uh, with my wife Robin uh, first trip uh, that I ever took was what we emphasize in the book is taking a guide and let them take you out there so that you have everything done for you and you don't have to, uh, you know, get frustrated at all. You know, so that's kind of the mentality we've taken here to get people started is to get enough uh, guiding on the front end and how to get rigged out and, uh, and go at it from that aspect. You know, so many people, it, it's funny, we, we were talking about this today. We, we've actually just left the creek. We got here just in back, mm -hmm. just back at, just in time from uh, Hatchery Creek here in beautiful Cumberland, uh, Cumberland Lake area. In fact, that's the, behind us. We had, we had great plans to set this up on Hatchery Creek and do it while people were fishing mm -hmm. behind us. Mm -hmm. uh, but yet what happened today, we can predict the weather. So showers, Somewhere in the middle of this, showers are going to start coming down behind you. But behind us is the beautiful Cumberland River uh, that, as you take a look at it, is is where I started getting my first fly fishing experience by by doing with this with, with Wade. But it, it really is something. Fishing is something that you and I have done since we, since we were kids. True. Very true. You know, I mean, we, we get to we get to a lake or something. It's 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 not unheard of that when we get to a lake and we get out there and we start casting, somebody will almost always invariably walk up to us because they either have some old piece of equipment that somebody gave to them or an old, you know, some, somebody in the family re reminded them that they had done this or they had seen a river run through it. The uh, movie. The movie or read, the, or read Norman McLean's great book. Mm -hmm. uh, and somewhere along the way, it, it kind of just rustles this thought, this memory of, of, of how they, they, they want to do that. And 
that was really kind of the inspiration for the book. It's that is that for all those people that walk up to us on lakes mm -hmm. and walk up and say to us, you know, I really like to learn how to fly fish, but but it just seems too hard. And so that's when we kind of decided to try and take some of the mystery out of the out of the whole thing. If you know, if you like to fish, you're halfway there probably more than halfway there. It's just a different tool to go fishing with. You know, it's a different type of device, same rod and reel, but different functions on it. And that's that's the key to the book is to get you started in it with selection of equipment, you know, with what the differences are. And if you can get people uh, the fundamental information they need, it gets rid of a lot of the frustration, you know, of going forward. And it's like that we, we talk about yeah. golf. And we talk about, you know, other things, hobbies and all. A lot of times things end up sitting in the corner of their garage, you know, and not getting used again, like exercise equipment. I want to do all this stuff with this new New Year's Eve resolution. And they get frustrated and they, they don't keep up with it. And so now you started, though, fishing. Well, both of us started fishing at, at young ages. Yeah. You, you with your brother, right? My, my brother uh, is an outdoorsman. Uh, ended up with uh, Florida Game and Fish, game warden for almost 30 years. And, you know, we went cane pole fishing, you know, in all the lakes in central Florida and learned how to catch bass and bluegill and stuff like that. I was a little brother, you know, tagging along with him, you know, so we, we had a lot of good times there and it just in, ingrained in me that desire to go out and fish. And fly fishing is kind of a souped up cane pole. You know, it's uh, it's got a little more technical you know, aspects to it, but you know, we we call them strike indicators instead of bobbers on them. That's right, because they cost more. If you call them a strike indicator instead of a bobber, you can charge three dollars more for them. It's like boat so, parts. Boat yeah. parts. I have the best boat for fishing. <laughs> I have his boat. So you never want to have your own boat. You want your brother-in-law to have a boat. So that's that's what we got on the on the I, river behind us. I that's have where a lawyer for brother-in-law. <laughs> He's got me with a boat, so it's trade. It, yeah, it trades off. But you know, you're. I mean, you're right though. I mean, my, my I can still remember the first time my dad took me fishing. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was with a cane pole. Threw it out there. Put a put a put a worm on the end of it. And I remember dad saying to me. Just remember, when you see that bobber move, pull as hard as you can. And you don't tell a, a first or second grader to just pull as hard as you can, because I remember taking that pole and yanking as hard as I can and watching the first fish that I ever caught go flying over my shoulder back into the woods behind me. Uh, but, you know, so, half that next time, <laughs> half, that, half, half, that. half that next time. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of really the, the whole I idea that we had behind the book. And, you know, I, I think the, the other thing that, that you learn at a very young age when you start fishing and, and really from fly fishing, I find a lot more serenity. In trout live being, in beautiful places. Yes, trout live in beautiful places. Uh, we were on Hatchery Creek today and you could see the eagles flying. You hear this call, call, call. And you look up and there's eagles flying overhead or you look down the path uh, at the creek that you're on and there's suddenly, you know, a deer looking up at you. And it just really is just a way that releases everything from inside of you. In fact, you know, I mean, during the COVID situation, Kathy, this is this really was a true story that Kathy could never get a hold of me. Yeah. Because during COVID, what I would do is is to to keep my sanity, I would go out and fly fish just at a at a either the pond by my house or the one out in Boone County, Kentucky, Camp Ernst. And, mm -hmm. and it was one of those things that that was my get away. That was my way during the pandemic to, to not go stir crazy. And it's okay during the pandemic because fly fishers actually invented the COVID protocol. We socially distance because once you find your particular honey hole, you don't want anybody getting near it. So you spread out all of your stuff all the way around you so nobody can get around stake you. You put your chair your down, you stake out your turf. So we socially distance. Uh, you know, and we're, we're, we're constantly washing our hands. If you've yeah. ever caught fish in the summertime, uh, you understand you're, you're, you're Pretty constantly, get, you know, you're constantly washing your hands and we wear buffs. So nothing changed. Yeah, nothing changed. We, we, we wear these masks anyway, uh, to keep the sun off our face and ears. Uh, again, uh, 
the, for 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 marketing purposes, they call them buffs. Buffs. Uh, yeah. Everybody else would call them a mask. Yeah. But we wear buffs to keep everything off of our face, and and that was actually so. We had, fly fishers actually invented the social protocol right. for that was going through the through the pandemic time. Right. And that was one of the things, again, you kind of look at that was the way I got away at the time. And it was just a way to, to come in and be part of something bigger than you when you're, mm -hmm. when you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. Now, for the person who is just beginning, Wade, one of the things we, we, we talk about is, is you may, it may, we're not saying this is for you. But there's a good way to find out how, right? Yes. You know, getting getting started in, in fly fishing, you know, is is uh, is something that you do with somebody that that can get you through it. You know, that can, it might be a relative, it might be a parent, it might be a, an aunt or uncle, um, maybe just a you know, a not blood family. Right. You know, get a lot of that out there, and and you know, the the optimal way is to get a guy. Get a guide. Uh, and, uh, and go fishing with them because they get rid of all of the technical stuff. They're going to put you either, you know, in waders on the shore or put you in a boat. And they're going to rig everything up for you. They're going to put you on fish. And they'll even spend time with you, you know, for half an hour, 45 minutes before you ever get in the boat. Right. Just do a little practice, get used to handling things. And when you get in the boat, you're fairly dangerous to the fish by then. You know, you can, you can get out after them. That, that just does a world of good because then you can go home and think about, did I like what I, what I did today? You know, is it, is it something that's, that I, I want to do again? And now you have an idea of the equipment that you're going to be using and, and some of the techniques. And that's the first time that I fly fished. I came down here to uh, Wade's house. He and Robin have this beautiful place on the Cumberland River. Uh, and we got a guide. He said, I'm going to have this guide go out and teach you how to fly fish. He didn't say he was going to do it. He was going to sit at the head of the boat and he was going to fly fish while the guide was going, no, you're not doing that right. Do this, do this. And that was really, That's I right. mean, the first time that I went out, it's probably, pro probably not a pun to say I was hooked. I, I really, to the mm -hmm. point when I got out there the first time That's and true. first time I caught a, caught a, even, I mean, it was a small, small little rainbow on a on a on a, on a nymph or a midge that the, 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 the guide had put on there i mean the excitement of that it, what it does it gets you to the point where you know i can do this yeah you know you you feel confident about i can do this i i can consider getting into this well and the other thing i think it does is if you're out there with a guide you're with some probably with somebody else you might go by yourself you, but you're out there with somebody else in the boat that you know uh the guide is giving instruction and it, the guide is not going to sit there. If you do a bad cast, the guide's not going to go, come on now, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. But he's going to offer instruction as you go through. You know, we went, Wade and I went out to Missouri this year and went fly fishing with uh, a couple of the contributors in the book, uh, Jim and Janine Young. We went out to uh, and fished the Missouri River. And the guide that I had for the day on the river, Wade had a, had a separate boat that he was in. Uh, the guide that, that Jim Young and I had, was talking about how he had had somebody in the boat, uh, which was for what was probably going to be his last boating trip of fly fishing. He was in the advanced stage of the Parkinson's. Mm, yeah. And he could, best a guide said, he could barely flip over the side of the boat. Right. And he caught a bunch of fish. Because when you're out with a guide, the guide is going to put you on fish as you flip that, that line over there. In a lot of respects, you're going to catch... If you're within 10 yards of the boat, you're going to catch fish. Mm -hmm. And again, so we would recommend the first thing that you do before you do anything else. Don't read any other chapters in the book. You get the idea. You think it's going to be something you like to do, you want to do. Go out and get a guide. Go out and go out on the day for the river. And I, I don't want to sound all Walden Pond on this, but also... Uh, you, know, you want to go out and just be a part of nature, be a part of what, what's around you. Absolutely. You hear the eagles call, you hear everything else going and that kind of, and then if you decide you don't like it, do me a favor, re-gift the book to somebody in the family <laughs> who wants to learn fly, fish, fly fishing as well. You can read, you know, we'll, we'll send you an autographed copy without your name in it. That's what we'll, you know, we could do that <laughs> and, and, and do that, do that whole thing. 
good. But once you get the feel that you like it, then you're going to absolutely become obsessed. Where, where's, hand me the book a second, Wade. I, you know, we, 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 we recently lost our, our dear friend PJ O'Rourke, uh, who had been on, uh, uh, been on this show, been on uh, this event with us. And I, I love, PJ gave us a quote for the book before he passed away. God love him. But uh, he has a, this wonderful quote on the back of the book. Give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish and he turns into a dry fly catch and release angling fanatic up to his liver in icy water, wearing ridiculous waders and absurd hat, pestering trout with three pound test line on a thousand dollar graphite rod and going on endlessly about royal courtsman lures that he tied himself losing, using muskrat fur and partridge. You know, and, and the thing about the, uh, the, uh, the quote there, it reminds me what we were talking about a moment ago. You know, if you're already fishing, you know, with regular spinning gear or cane poles or bait casters, whatever, you're already halfway there. What fly fishing does is it gives you another tool that will help you catch fish when those other methods don't work. You know, like when we go up to Hatchery Creek, we were up there this morning and a lot of people up there with, with spinning gear and they may or may not catch them, but people with fly rods are. Yeah. They're catching fish when nobody else is. You know, so the fly rod adds another tool in the box to do what you like to do, which is go fishing. He, he says that because mm -hmm. I'm here down on my birthday weekend. And he absolutely destroyed me yesterday on the creek. The one thing you have to get used to when you when you find a fishing buddy that you go, you have to you have to revel in the fact when they have the ideal day. Yesterday was a yes, banner day. Was yesterday the was the best. He he caught ten hogs out on the creek, and I caught bait as we as we went, went out on, on, on for the day. Yeah, on the fly with Rick and Wade. You can see them on there. We post them. So hey, nice yeah. By, by the way, before we get into start talking a little bit about equipment and some of the other things in the book, uh, if you get a chance, go to Facebook. Go to On the Fly with Rick and Wade. That is a good way. We, we post a, a lot of information on there. We post information about where we're going to be signing books. We also post some information on there about how you can pick up a copy. And we have lots of fish porn. Oh, yeah. that's what you refer to it as when you start when you get into it you'll start getting all these sites you're going to want to look at pictures of other people catching fish so you can go on there and see his banner day yesterday and see me with no videos whatsoever although i did catch a good one today yes so we got you know you're going to see uh places to go fish places to get more training fly fishing clubs in your areas uh you know uh, uh just guides we have used that had we've had good experiences with and we solicit that from other people you know that join the page so there's a ton of information flying around there you know that really helped you to move along one of the things we did in this book wade was kind of once you get hooked on fly fishing what are kind of the, the some of the bare necessities that you need you need a rod you need a reel but as you go into it you don't have to go out and spend no. $2,000 to suddenly get the best bamboo uh, lacquered rod and, and everything else, do you? I mean, you, you can no. get started with some, some very basic equipment. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we talk about in the book that the rod is the, is the main piece of equipment. You could have a, an extremely cheap reel, you know, and put it on a halfway decent rod and do just as good as anybody with the, the, the most expensive equipment possible. Uh, you know, get a good rod as much as your budget will allow. You can get, you know, all different manufacturers out there. There's tons of reviews like everybody has seen, but the rod's the biggest tool to start with. The reel, you know, is, is a distant second. You know, it's still important, but it's a nice the, place to store line. Yeah, the, the rod, the, the reel ends up just becoming a place that you store line and you, as you learn how to let line out and mend lines and things of that nature. You're you're never going to go again. Most fish you're going to catch are going to be within 10, 20 yards. Of you're going to you use are. your fingers. You're you're going to strip line in and bring the fish in and never use the reel. Eighty percent of the time, you know. So fly line is a different animal than regular fishing line. You know, it's it, it's very hard to tangle and easy to work with. One thing we do talk about in equipment is it's we are very safety conscious. Uh, mm -hmm. when you're out fishing, when you're, when you're doing something there, there are a lot of things that you should be carrying with you, carrying a first aid kit, uh, 
Mm-hmm. Um, if you sunscreen. think sunscreen, if you if you th- if you think if you think you're not going to hook somebody, yeah, there's some tricks to getting hooks out, and none of them end well. But there there are ways of dealing with that. Big hats are a good idea because they catch hooks instead of in your ear. Um, you know, glasses are very glasses. important. Sunglasses, sunglasses to take the to take the the the. The, the glare off the water and to protect your eyes just in case that that San Juan worm goes flying in the wrong direction. There are and things flying grabs. around, so it's good to have that on. You have to, when you're out with somebody, you do have to kind of have the presence of where the other person is in the water at any, at any given time. We actually, when we go to Hatchery Creek here in Cumberland, we stand across the water from each other on different mm-hmm. shores and throw into the, basically the same line. That comes to, of, as it comes down the stream. So you know, you you might ask when, when we hit, start buying all this equipment, you see all these people that, that do want to go out and go. Well, what do I, what do I get? What are the flies I get? What are the things that I do? Mm-hmm. And and the whole idea of of fly fishing, and and you're really good on this. I I, I kind of want you to get into a little bit yep. the levels of water stream that that come through because you could be throwing a fly on top and the fish are down at the bottom. That's true. You know, uh, most fish are going to feed down close to the bottom, you know, so there's a lot of flies that are wet and nymphs and midges and things that that are coming out of the bottom of the river or creek, you know, so your feeding, you know, zone is down there. Or you hear about, you know, dry fly fishing, and that's the bugs that are on top, you know, and then mayflies and caddis and things like that. There was tremendous caddis hatch out on the Missouri River trip that we went with uh, Jim and Janine Young on. And they so, were so many, everywhere. Yeah, so many flies, actually, you couldn't fly fish because there were thousands of them on the river and the idea that that fly was going to catch yours. Yeah, yeah. Although, I did, you did score. I did, I did do that. I, I was able to do that. And a dry fly fishing is like high church of fishing, you know. So it, being able to get something to take a bug off the top of the water that's attached to your line uh, it's pretty thrilling stuff. You know, it's like a slow motion movie of it about to happen. You know, and you're watching it. Tremendous. You know, um, but anyway, the the different flies. There's wet ones and dry ones. Okay, and you just you just change some of your you know your tippets and leaders and things. But very simple. It's kind of like average spinning and, and bait casting fly fishing. They've got tons of different lures that they use, and the lure carries the line out. With a spinning rod, with a fly rod, the line carries the lure out. It's kind of bass backwards, I guess yeah. you could say. Yeah. You know, so you know that's the fundamental thing of learning to fly fish that, that a guide will do. They'll get you to where you can do those things with with some uh, proficiency. And that's one of the things I think when you start, you're you're, you're getting now. You, you've gone out. You've had the trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you say, okay, I want to get involved in this. Maybe you borrowed a or, or a fly rod from somebody going out the the guide has one that when you go out and do this do this whole thing you suddenly now you start buying and i you know jim young had had a great point in the book uh talking about just some basic flies that you start with um and without going into the whole idea of the life of a bug it's the life of a bug and you want to put yourself into a position of what is happening in the stream because there could be midges, which look like little small worms that are coming up. Uh, you could find yourself with nymphs that we are in deal. the emerger section where they're getting ready. And then on top is when they pop up and suddenly become a, we a mayfly fish two or whatever. Different rivers. We fished yeah. two different rivers on that trip to Montana, the Missouri and the, uh, the Gallatin. Yeah, and they were just two totally different environments, two totally different ecological setups. One was dry fly fishing, and the other was you know down at the bottom, you know stone flies and things coming up, you know out of the, the river basin, and uh, you know it was just a great primer, you know on bugs, you know just to see it in the field, you know it was interesting. So when you get the book, take a look at it. There are some things that you kind of start your first first uh, fly kit out with mm-hmm. that you that you go into the into the to, into the first fishing trip with again not something that you have to spend a couple hundred dollars on 
no. go to your go to your local flight. I you know one of the things that that I think people overlook a lot. Let's you know let's get into. There are the big box stores where everybody could go and buy the things they do, but we are sure. big fans of fly shops. Uh, and there's two reasons for that. Usually, there we want to support somebody that's in the business of doing just fly fishing. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Yeah. They, they, You'll get they, a straight answer. You'll get an informed answer. Well, and what they also want is they want you to come back. Yeah. So you go into the fly shop and you say, "What's hitting out there today?" Mm -hmm. Well, if they tell me that you know some particular fly has been wonderful and they want me to buy twenty of them. Uh, and I go out and nothing's hitting on it. I'm probably not going to go back. Yeah, they want you. But they, to they want you. They want you repeat business. They so, want you to succeed. Yeah, Absolutely. we when we got out on the water when we were in uh, Missouri, there was a fly called the pink Frenchie, and man, everything on that day was hitting on it. We gobbled up a bunch of them. Of course, the next day nothing was hitting on it, <laughs> but but that's you know that's that's, that's why it's fishing and not catching. Fishing doesn't matter what kind of tool you use. It's fishing. We were well. We had that experience yesterday. Mm -hmm. Everything they were hitting here. It's uh, it's early spring, so it's uh, spawning season. So everything they were hitting on was eggs. We could do no wrong. You could do no wrong. I, I yeah. I thanks. Was, thanks for the royal we there. Yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, but we get out. We got out there, and and it was it was yesterday. Everything with your eggs. We get up there today. They didn't want an egg for anything. You know, they they were they were going on San Juan worms and 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 little nymphs and midges and and things of that nature. Yep. So yep. the creek changes and things of that nature. So find a local fly store. Um, support your local. Fly support store. your local fly shop. We're 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 very big into that. That. Uh, um, I go over to the fly shop over in Hyde Park, Cincinnati, get my flies there. Uh, the the really the really good flies. Now, if I'm just going to buy some little green green weenies and things like that, I'll, I'll probably go to the big box store. But but we we really believe in the in the idea of, of the small yeah the small fly shop. And there's there's tons of programs you know out there. You know Orvis you know offers a bunch of training programs. You know has tons of information. If you can't find it online, you're not going to be able to find it. There's just ton, how to tie knots to how to fight a fish. You name it. You know, there, there are programs out there that you can look at, YouTube, you know, all those resources. One of the things we really make, recommend to people is once you have that whole idea that you that you want to get into this into this sport, look up your local Orvis store. Again, uh, it's, a, it's a bigger, it's a big chain, but... They also do uh, at Orvis Fly Fishing 101 and Fly Fishing 102, mm -hmm. which are instructional classes right. for free because, of course, they want you now to come in and buy an Orvis rod, an Orvis reel, Minimal an Orvis cost. hat. An or but, but it's, but it's the, the classes are free. Yeah. Uh, and it goes everything from what the terminologies are, what the techno what, the, mm -hmm. what what all of the things are you have in your hand. To the point that they also then 102 the class takes you out for some actual practice where you can actually fly cast, learn how to direct the fly, learn how to, uh, and they have people there that will make sure you're not doing any of the bad mm -hmm. habits mm -hmm. that you always instruct me I shouldn't be doing when we're out on the boat. Right. So one of the, you know, so strongly encourage that. They also have a fly tying class. Yes. Swore I'd never do it. Swore I would never start flying tie tying flies because you know I mean they're a they're a buck ten a piece. <coughs> what yeah. do I need to be going out and flying tying flies for? Yeah. Of course, my wife Linda got me a vice and the materials. And what do I do now? You tie flies. <laughs> I tie flies when she's at work, when she's not around. Yeah, I will sit there and tie 15, 20 flies just while listening to the news. So it's one of those things where, where once you get into it, there are so many different things you can do in this. By the way, Joel Stansberry, who uh, is in the book, mm -hmm. one of the expert fly tires, if you're in watching this and you're around the greater Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area, you probably know of Joel if you're in the fly fishing world because he is uh, one of the masters at tying flies, actually has creative flies for the bourbon trail. Do you know that? Too cool. 
Yeah. yeah, he has flies that he made for each of the stops on the bourbon trail. So that when there's a Baker's Mark fly and a Buffalo Trace fly and all these various flies that he prepared for. I'd fish for those the, just to say I did. Yeah, just, just, yeah. To, just to say you caught something on them. <laughs> you know, the, the let's get real quick. We got a few minutes going to go in here still. Let's talk a little bit about technique. Although I don't want to get too into it now, but we'll do yeah. that maybe in another in another another uh, specific segment. Specific segment. Talk about it. But uh, one of the great fly fishers of all times is Joan Wolf. I, I was just thinking about Joan a few minutes ago uh, when we were talking about the rod. You know, is the main piece of equipment. Joan Wolf, by by far, one of the greatest fly casters that ever lived. Uh, she happens to be a woman. Uh, and won every contest back through the 40s, 50s, into the 60s, you know, just open casting, didn't matter who you were, a uh, phenomenal uh, individual, married Lee Wolf, you know, and they fished together for many years, uh, mainly Atlantic salmon and yeah. you know, things like that. Tremendous, tremendous uh, resource. Still runs her fly school yeah, she'll, up in the still, Northeast. Yeah, still is, uh, still running her fly school. But she had a, a quote we used in the book that, this is the only sport where you first learn how to cast backwards. backwards. That's it. It's that's important backwards as it is forwards. You know, and it's a tremendous resource there. And she's got tons of information. Again, look her up. Two things we'd like to talk about here before we before we take a few questions is I do want to point out that there are we also have a chapter in this book on teaching children mm -hmm. to fly fish. We are very much into getting involved in derbies and things of that nature. If you have something coming up, if you have it, uh, have a uh, whether it's uh, attending or whether it's even doing a, a viral, we would love to be a part of uh, of the experience. Big into children's uh, teaching children's uh, classes and teaching young kids to this sport because they they seem to get it quicker than we adults do. Well, they usually they're listening, their listening skills. And, and that, that reminds me, uh, you know, the, the first trip I ever took was a guided trip, you know, on the Bitterroot River in Montana back in the 80s. And Robin and I went, my wife, and guess who listened to the guide better? Oh, yeah. Robin did. Yeah. Of yeah. course. I mean, that <laughs> bigger fish and more fish than the testosterone guy here, you know, that wanted to cast further, you know, and all that powerful stuff. She caught more fish. Because she was paying attention to what did what the guide said. And that one of the guides I had in the Columbia River out in Washington said, uh, you know, after we'd been on the water for a couple of hours, he said, now, Wade, what did we talk about? You know, in other words, remember what we talked about on this river, you fish a couple of nuances this way. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know, so listen to your guide. Listen to your guide. But but also it's, it's, uh, it's the ability. And couples fishing is the same thing. Uh, Jim and Janine Young. Did a wonderful chapter on couples fishing. Uh, I've known both of them since high school. They got into the sport uh, very similar. They went on a they went on a guided tour one time, and now they have fished the world yeah. uh, and are doing their own thing with a a couples fishing uh, experience that they have. And we're going to have them on Zoom in the books on one of these times to talk about couples. But but the one thing we always talk about of that is for the men, for the husbands on couples fishing, mm -hmm. prepared to be outfished. Prepared to be beat. They're, prepared to be beat. Because, be, and and mm -hmm. a lot of and a lot of reasons is that part of the whole back forward is a finesse thing. It's finesse, and, not power. And we try as guys, yeah. throw it as hard as we can, of course. That brings into play. Then you end up in a tree behind you. That means you end up in you know with a with a yeah. big a big uh, a cobweb of of line going out. So you know th those are the things that I think that that again Jim and Janine uh, explained very well in the book. But the thing you have to do is know you're going to be outfished by your spouse. Very be possible. ready for that. Yes. Uh, the final thing that I want to bring up in all of this is that a lot of people love to eat drought. Mm -hmm. Other people believe that they are sacred and they should all be caught in release. What's the right answer? Yeah. Um, are you hungry? Are you hungry? <laughs> you know, it, we, we actually start out each chapter with quotes and in, and in this chapter uh, where we go in and actually have talk about 
whether it's catch and release or whether it's going to be, you know, we're having what we're having for dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have been, we have been, had the joy of uh, at headline books of being around Henry Winkler more than a couple of times, who was one of the great, oh, yeah. right. great fly fishers, uh, not only a, a, a prolific children's book writer, which, you know, it wasn't just Fonzie. He's writes some of the finest children's books that are out there. Uh, but he always talks about, you know, Fish are too, trout are too pretty to, to put in a pan. Mm-hmm. He catches them, he kisses them, he puts them back in the water. <laughs> now, we also took a look at that and, and uh, some of the great chefs say, no, 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 no. <laughs> if there's nothing better than, than, than a nice smoked uh, in, in a, a, a smoked uh, fillet of trout. There's a time for that, you know. So, the, uh, the, the big part of what we, you know, promote in the book is catch and release you know how to do that properly and how to handle fish and you know obviously fighting fish and things like that but that's a big part of it but you know there are many fish out there that are tremendous on the the dinner table and so what we have done is we've also provided a whole bunch of recipes in that uh, mm-hmm. master chef john mocker has given us his recipe for how he likes trout prepared uh, marcus carey who some people who might listen to his podcast can uh, know that Marcus gave us a recipe for how when you're out on the trail and when you're camping, how to prepare on the camp. And the coolest one we have is Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Tim Farmer right. gave us a recipe. We're going to try and get Tim on here for one of these shows. Tim Farmer is not only a, as you as you have watched his shows on PBS, uh, Tim Farmer is not only just a uh, chess, but is actually has, has has Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, and is a it is a marvelous chef. Mm-hmm. Comes up with these great recipes that they show on the show every week, but also he's a tremendous fly fisher, and so he has some wonderful recipes uh, that you can go to. So if you want to take some of these fish home, only thing you need to do is make sure you check local guidelines and local rules for what fish are actually available to take home and, and what goes into it. Mm-hmm. So some places you go, you're not allowed to take them home. Some places catch and release only. You have to make sure that you you end up with the right uh, the right fish at the right time when you're taking right. them home. Sure. Uh, here on the Cumberland, for instance, there's a slot. There is, it's protected slot of 15 to 20 inches and you can only keep five fish, only one over 20. You know, So there's a bunch of rules and regs out there you gotta make yourself aware of. and. Your game and fish people out there are tremendous help. They will they will help you not only put you on good spots to fish, but what to use, like a guide would. You know, they just they want you to succeed. It's it's funny you say that because the 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 fish and game folks up in Boone County, mm-hmm. Kentucky, have gotten to the point where I, I was going out so much for the during the COVID time frame, they finally quit asking me for my license. Right. Oh, yeah. Buy a license, by the way. Yeah. Well, they finally quit asking me for the license, and it was just coming over going, I know you got a license, Rick, where, but where are you, what are you catching today? Where mm-hmm. are you going? If you tried over there, they were catching a bunch of them yesterday over on the on the far side, and they're, they're very, you know, very nice folks, but buy your license. Don't, don't go out and, and not be part of the conservation programs and things that are going on in your That's state. Right. And all that is happening. We're we're about coming to the end of our time frame here, and I know we had a couple questions that popped up. Uh, Kathy, you want to jump back in here and join us? And uh, what are what are we what do we got some questions on? Absolutely, we do have a few questions. Um, one person wants to know where your favorite places to fish are. Favorite places to fish. I, I will tell you that 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 and I didn't fly fish there, uh, but the four of us, uh, Wade and I and our spouses took a trip uh, out to the Grand Canyon and we were on the Yellowstone or the Snake? I'm trying to remember what we were on, but it was a wonderful experience because what you did is you took about an hour horseback ride to the spot where you were fishing. That was the Yellowstone. Fished all day on the Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Yeah, National fished Park. Yeah. fished all day on the on the park, and then you take the 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 horses back to the the loading area of where you were, and it was just a phenomenal experience of not only being out amongst nature, uh, but also of the tremendous fly fish or fishing experience. I was not fly fishing at the time. I caught some things on some lures that the guide gave me, but uh, you know the uh, 
probably some of the answer to that question is usually you have what they call home waters, you know, like the river behind me here is the Cumberland River. And I found this remote spot after looking for several years, you know, back, back I don't know, many moons ago now, but to, to, to find that place you follow the river, you know, and you look for those places. And this is my home water here, but I love fishing out in the Rocky Mountains. You know, the Missouri, the Bitterroot, the Blackfoot, the Gallatin, you know, there's just tons of rivers out in Washington, the Columbia, the Deschutes, you know, in, in Oregon. There's just tons of places out there. And if you'll, there's a, uh, a program, a movie out there, I think Tom Skerritt narrates it. It's called The Fly Highway. So Highway 20 out near Yellowstone and it runs up into Idaho. Uh, and uh, they go over all the great fly fishing spots out in the West, many of them, not all of them, but uh, it's just a great resource to look at. So look up the fly highway. That'll, that'll give you some great uh, Western opportunities. You know, we're here in the Midwest here with the Cumberland River. One of the used to be best kept secrets east of the Mississippi, but not anymore. Not anymore. You get out there on a, on a day when the, when they start to, when they're not running a whole bunch yeah, of water the through weekends. the dam, when it gets, when it gets shallow on the weekends, boy, it is, it is wall to wall. And that's because there's a lot of fish, you know, a lot of fish in it. all three state records, you know, come from about a mile of here, you know, so it's, it's some seriously good fly fishing. And, well, you know, and I, I the, the one thing I would say is, is if you're from Kentucky, the one thing we do very well in Kentucky is we have what we call the the neighborhood lake program. And the Department of Fish and Wildlife, if you look on their site, somebody in your county, somewhere there is a lake or there is a stream that is stocked by the by the hatchery where we fish today. We talk a lot about trout, but you know, bass fishing and bluegill and lakes and ponds and you know and, and areas in, in your part of the country or part of the world. There's tremendous resources there. Saltwater fly fishing, a whole nother world, you know, down in, in Florida where I grew up, you know, just tremendous opportunities, you know, inshore fishing, fly rods. So my, I guess my home water is probably going to end up being Davout Park because it's closest to Ludlow. There you go. Yeah, they they actually have they actually have uh, the old lake that I that I grew up fishing when I was a kid. Prisoners Lake is they stock it with the uh, fish <laughs> all the time. So. Very good. Hope we answered that question kind of roundabout, but I hope we did. Yes, you did. Thank you. <clears throat> As uh, the publisher of this book, Rick and Wade, I think one of the best stories about the book itself is the cover photo. Um, we've got several comments on the cover of this book. Would you like to tell the viewers about that photo? You know the story. You know, you talked with the uh, well, yeah, we we with, uh, Manny. We had this we had this idea of exactly what mm. we wanted on the cover. A fish rising about to take a bug. And we looked and we looked and we looked and found absolutely nothing. Uh, and suddenly I get this email from Wade one day. He said, I found the picture. And he sends me this picture, which is ended up being the cover of the book. As soon as you see it, you go, yeah, that's what we're looking for. That's that, exactly that's what we that's wanted. Yeah. Now we have to figure out who took the picture. Right. How we're gonna how we're which gonna get a hold of it. It took a little doing. We ended up tracing the picture back. It was the first place photo of the year at some European fishing resort. So we are South American fish. I can't remember where it was that it won the photo of the year at this mm -hmm. resort. And we got in contact with them. They said, I said, How did, where did this picture come from? And they said, Manny Svensson, Manny, Manny uh, from Sweden. And so we sent an email to Manny and we, we were asked the, the people, can you give us his uh, email address? He sent us the, they, they sent us the email address and we got mm -hmm. a hold of Manny Svensson and, and just was able to get this, this picture uh, taken. Uh, he, he gave us the rights to this picture to put on the front of the book and it is ideal. This beautiful fish just rising up, and there's this golden brown, uh, just golden mayfly that he's just mm -hmm. about to chomp down on uh, right at the right time of evening. I mean, it was just the perfect photo. And that's kind of the book. idea that we had for the book was, you know, the fish is eating the homework that you did to get to that point. 
know, to, to now, now you're now you're practicing. Now you're practicing. No, oh, the fish ate your homework. So that's mm -hmm. the that's the whole the whole idea behind it. Right. Um, it is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. We were the so, story. so happy with it. Um, to close out today, and I'd like to thank everybody who was with us on Facebook. Um, Rick and Wade will be back with us um, doing maybe a, a video on each chapter or two of the book throughout the summer. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, I have one question that I'd like to know your worst fish experience. I can I can tell you one of the first ones I had back in the in the cane pole days. My brother let me tag along, and he had one of his high school buddies there with him, and I was trying to hook that red wiggler that I had dug up. I had to carry the shovel so we would dig worms, and I was trying to get the the worm on the hook. And my brother's buddy shuffled across my fishing line and kicked it, and it drove it into my thumb. And that was uh, probably one of the worst ways to start fishing. <laughs> but I still had the bug after that. But I, I, I never forgot that. And getting the hook out was not a good option any way you try and do it. You know, so I don't recommend that. That's why we talk about safety gear. But that's probably one of the worst. The rest of them, the worst I ever had was wonderful. Yeah, you know, a, band, a band day fishing is better than any day at the office. So I, I really have to think, I would have to think about that myself other than... Uh, that's the, you, you know, know the, the I don't know that I've ever had a bad day fishing. I mean, yesterday I actually, was my best day. I your best day that. fishing, yeah. Thank you for my birth. Thank you for reminding me of that. On my birthday, you you outfished me. The, Whenever the, I ask him best day ever, he says it's his birthday. Yeah, because so, that's when we call all this fish. So the uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't know that I've ever, ever had a bad experience fishing. I've had a lot of days where I've been stunned. exciting days uh, caught in. Uh, you know, thunderstorms and water spouts. Oh, yeah, that you would know. be the one probably yeah, when we were coming we were, back on. We were racing back. We, we raced. Punta yeah. Gorda down there. Yeah, so. we, we, we uh, actually, this was not fly fishing, but we, we were out tarpon, uh, fishing. tarpon fishing in Punta Gorda and try the, our guide who worked for him at the time at the at the fire department yeah. we that that would be it because he decided we could stay out we could stay out we could stay out and suddenly he went oh i see that storm coming in and we started hauling as quick as we could back to the dock and we never made it Look, looking we back, ended up seeing that we see a water spouts come up behind you seeing everything else we Go immediately faster. yeah we pulled we pulled into another mm -hmm. another dock and not the one that we were supposed to be from but safe harbor safe harbor sat down had lunch yeah. <laughs> waited for the storm to pass over i think i think that's it it's probably other than that fishing um can't say anything uh, as far as worst experiences. Usually, pretty good. If you if you if you simply just enjoy, well, being enjoy the, the solitude and the beauty of being out the, there. Let me, let me give you uh, Jack Mitchell's quote from the evening hatch out in Washington. Uh, I, I got him to give me some great feedback. You know, for some parts of the book, he said, "Fishing is the camaraderie of many or the solitude of one." You know, so you can do it both ways. You know. And you'll find a lot more quotes like that in the book. Other people that love fly fishing, everybody from people like Tom Brokaw to Tony Blair to uh, regular fly, fly guys. We got a, we got from all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Ivar Svensson shows some of the flies that he's tied. He's one of the the, the world's. Uh, find him on Facebook all the time doing mm -hmm. face, doing videos on fly tying. He he provided us with the, a particular fly that he that he likes tying. Um, Barry Carruth from Ireland, talking about fly fishing in Ireland and those type of experience, so. Well, that's that's terrific. And I know that there is a lot more to fishing than fishing. Mm, yes. Um, there is a Zen, a therapy. Um, there's, it's a much grander sport than some. Mm. Um, and you guys did a terrific job on this book. Um, if people want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Easiest way to probably do it is you can either send an email to neverleavefish uh, at gmail.com. That is the, the email that we use for the book. Uh, that's uh, based upon an old quote by, by Moses. You never leave fish to find fish. So neverleavefish at gmail.com. Or the easiest way is to get onto Facebook and join our group 
on the fly with Rick and Wade. Mm -hmm. We post a lot of things on there. You can always get a hold of us through, through the Facebook Super page. Super easy there. Yeah. yeah, very easy. Well, that's terrific. And all of those links are posted in the comments on the Facebook video. If you joined us late, this video, you can watch it in its entirety on the Zoom in the Books Facebook page. In the coming weeks, it will be available on the Zoom in the Books YouTube channel. So watch for that. And Rick and Wade, I want to thank you so much for writing such a terrific book and joining us on Zoom in the Books today. Thank, thank you, you very much. Good to see you, thank Kathy. You. Thank and you. Thank you, everyone. We'll be back soon. Mm -hmm.